I was born in Calcutta, India in 1935. I was schooled in the Himalayan hills of Nainital, which was at that time a British hill station. In 1947, India gained independence, and what followed in 1948 was the partition of India. Now there is Bangladesh, Pakistan, and India in the middle. My father was in the British Army and was allowed to take his demob in any Commonwealth country. From a holding camp, we decided to migrate to Australia. I was 13. During that voyage, I can clearly remember a passenger saying to me, when you get to Australia, you'll be a success. We disembarked in Sydney. My first day in Australia was the 1st of January, 1949. At 16, I became an electrical apprentice. At 17, I broke with a hundred year long family tradition of men joining the army. I joined the Navy, where I spent six years working on radar wireless technology. After the Navy, I joined Australia's largest retailer of electrical appliances at the time, H.G. Palmer, where I learned to fix televisions. Next, I worked for Philips for 11 years. While there, I brought television to the bush. I sold TVs to country stores and taught them how to fix them. I also studied management at night school in Sydney. In 1966, Phillips transferred me to Canberra as the sales rep in lighting and audio. Lighting became the prime focus because of Canberra's planned rapid development. I did that for seven years. I made lots of cold calls to electrical wholesalers, architects, consulting engineers, and institutions like the CSIRO, ANU, and Snowy Hydro. I built relationships. By 1972, I wanted to go out on my own. I remember the encouragement I received on the boat coming out here. You will be a success. I left Phillips and got $3,000 in superannuation. I combined that with a bank loan for another $2,000 and started the business. The company was built on three pillars, professional lighting, domestic lighting, and suppliers to electrical contractors. To my knowledge, this was unique in the industry. In 1978, after gaining a degree in accounting, I stayed at university to continue studying marketing. He's always been willing to invest in the business, and last year we started our seventh store in Orange. I had no idea if he'd be interested at his age, but when I took the opportunity to him, he got really excited. And next thing you know, he's writing out a substantial check. This led us to extend our services further into country New South Wales. We were able to influence architects and consulting engineers at the design stage to use products only we supplied. Our skill was making sure nobody offered a cheaper alternative for a similar quality product. That way, when specifications were released, the other Canberra wholesalers had to buy from us. They all bought from us for some 40 years. I strongly believe in education and excellence. I was a member of the Illuminating Engineering Society of America. I'd send my key staff to international conferences so they were up with the latest knowledge and we became trusted advisors in the industry. I've had quite a few trips to conferences. It's been excellent. You're in a room with a lot of people with a lot more knowledge than me. These guys have been in the industry for years and are always willing to help. You pick up little secrets and ways to do things. It's a way to experience different ideas from different people. Financially, Mick's very strong. He loves to learn, he loves knowledge. He's always been dedicated to learning and tries to impart as much as he can to 
everyone who works for him. In 1982, we were contracted to light the Black Mountain Tower for its official opening by the then Prime Minister, Malcolm Fraser. The entire South Face had to be lit up because that's what the dignitaries saw when the Prime Minister pressed the button two kilometers away. The light had to be instantaneous and the tower lit evenly. The result had to be a dramatic stab of light into the night sky. To get the safety harnesses, which were essential because of the high winds and working at flat height, I had to scale a nine meter high fence and throw over the harnesses that were blocked away behind it. We had to climb while carrying all our gear up a vertical 20 meter high ladder because it was the only way to reach the tower's top platform. Because the lights for the tower's three sections were each separately wired, the button that the Prime Minister pressed did nothing but ring a buzzer. I had three people with headphones listen for that buzzer and then switch on the lights so the tower lit instantly. It worked perfectly. It's no accident that we've lasted this long. From the start, we took a sound strategic approach to selecting our market and our customers. In this industry, sometimes the customer can't pay. We'd rather help them trade out of the problem. Closing them down helps no one. You know, I could probably rattle off 40 to 50 names that Mick would have helped over, say, a one to two year period to pay a debt back. His business is his whole life. It's everything. It's his total absorbing passion, except on Wednesdays when he plays golf. Mick loves his business, he comes in every day, he's always involved and he's always interested. Dad has always interacted with staff. When we paid in cash, he'd take around the pay packets himself so he'd always know how they were going and they could present him with any problems. When pay moved to direct deposits, he would take around their payslips to stay in touch. Now, payslips are emailed. He makes weekly visits to each branch to catch up. I get feedback about how much the staff love that Mick goes around and sees every branch once a week and tries to speak with everyone personally. Mick's my grandfather, so I'm the third generation to work at Project Lighting. I've been selling domestic lighting for about a year now. When I was in primary school, if I was sick, Mum would take me into work and Grandfather would look after me in his office. He really loves learning and really values education and was excited to hear I was studying at uni. He's really smart and he even taught me how to play chess. And after a while I became quite good at it. He's passionate about everything he does and always gives people a fair go. Project Lighting has had an exceptional life. It's one of the oldest surviving family businesses in Canberra, but it has had its challenges. Three years after starting, the Australian constitutional crisis hit when the Senate blocked money supply. Turmoil ensued, engulfing the nation. A federal election with a change of government restored supply, but that was a scary time for all of us because potentially no one could be paid. The global financial crisis also had a serious impact on the health of the company. Project Lighting has been a successful business for 48 years and now has seven branches. Its longevity is based on the skill and dedication of the people working with me. We have some 55 staff who love working here mostly only leave when they retire. We've helped light the homes of thousands of families. We've served hundreds of electrical contractors and advised and worked on some of the largest specialty projects in Canberra and the region. Dad's a really good manager. 
He'll let you make your own mistakes and always be there to advise you. Mick wants everyone to have the best customer service experience they can. We've always gone above and beyond to make sure that happens. That means constant contact with customers. Don't just treat them like they're a number. His greatest skills are spotting growth opportunities and advising, motivating and inspiring staff. He encourages them to find the opportunities that are there. He encourages the flow of business intelligence between all sides of our business. He inspires staff to listen carefully to what the customer wants and from their knowledge, match what we have to the customer and if we haven't got it, find out how to get it. Various companies over the years have offered to take us over, but I've always said no. Mick's business brain's in the right place. He knows what needs to be done, and he's done it. He nurtured his little baby, as we call it, and turned into a massively expanded family. The fact that it's still a family business is one of the main reasons I hang around. Education is important. I wanted to give back to the school that taught me, St. Joseph's College, so I set up a trust for the school. One of its investments was to buy electronic whiteboards. Now every classroom has one. Well, about 10 years back, Mick had called on us here at Nenital. I know that this is a very old school and they have well-established uh, systems and I doubted very much if they would brook any interference. They courteously stonewalled him, just as I expected, but no one quite contended with the kind of persistence and determination and tenacity which Mick had. He made several trips to India and met the highest authorities. The showcase project was the project for interactive whiteboards. After Mick's efforts, uh, the school finally installed these smart classes in all 20 classrooms. And they are very happy and in fact it has had a huge impact in the classroom teaching. I've poured my heart and soul into this business and watched it blossom and flourish for 48 years. Now it's time for me to step back and leave the running of the project lighting to my leadership team. They have demonstrated such excellence over the past two years that I can confidently retire knowing they will maintain the culture and continue my legacy so the company continues to prosper. Without our valued contractors, customers and suppliers, we could not have built such an iconic Canberra business. I welcome you to drop into our store knowing that our staff have the skills and knowledge to properly advise you on your specific project.